Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and a shout out to all my students. Today's video we're going to look at Rhino cameras and snapshots. Now, Rhino snapshot, what is that? This is a hidden feature. This is, this is a tough one to find, but very powerful. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna type in the command snapshots. And you see I have three snapshots set up. And these are not only different cameras, but pay attention to the sun in the lower right and also in the viewport. So when I go from camera one to camera two, that sundial is also changing. And into camera three, we see that changing. So it's not, snapshots is not only for saving cameras and suns, but all kinds of things in the view. So we'll take a look at that. All right, what else are we gonna look at? Let's take a look at our list here. So we're gonna be setting up a camera. We're gonna look at the lens length, which is super important. That sets the field of view, how wide of a camera angle. When you're working with cameras in Rhino, you wanna be able to undo when you move the camera in ways that you don't want to, and that's not a regular undo, that's actually a view undo. We're gonna look at saving camera views. Um, so this is different from snapshots, but we're gonna look at named views, talk about changing the height or knowing the height of the camera, and then finally snapshots. All right, before we jump into all of that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and click on subscribe and click on the bell to get all of the notifications so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you haven't been here before, take a look around. You'll see something helpful for you, I'm sure. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso, underscore my last name, Peluso. See what my students and I are up to. All right, so let's get into the tutorial. All right, I'm going to start a new Rhino file here, and I'm going to choose large objects inches. Okay, I am going to work in the 3D view, and you saw there was just a little geometry that we need to build for this. So let's go ahead and type in DOC to bring us to the document properties. Let's look at our grid. Let's make a grid line count of 100. Let's make every minor grid lines. I want to make them every foot, but since I'm in inches, I have to type in 12 inches. I want my major grid lines every 10 minor. So we'll see some major grid lines every 10 feet. And then I'm going to make my snap spacing the same as the minor grid line. So every foot or 12 inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll make some layers here. So we're going to have a floor layer make that current and I'm going to go ahead and draw a, a box that's 40 by 20. So now each one of these is 10 feet because we see the heavy grid lines around it. So that's just a helpful visual display there. So I'm going to type in box and my grid snap is on at the moment. So I'm going to snap to the origin and my other corner is going to be at we're going to make that at 20 feet by 40 feet now we'll talk a little bit about the at symbol if i'm making something from the origin i don't need the at symbol when it's not at the origin i do need the at symbol so we'll take a look at it so here's without the at symbol so i'm going to type in 20 feet in the x comma 40 feet in the Y enter okay and now I can make the height of this so I want I'm gonna extrude this downward I'm gonna make this negative six inch I don't know what it is with me but I like the top of my floor at zero okay so that's the top of my floor at zero okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and make a wall layer Okay, and I'm going to also make a box. All right, so here's a case. I'm using my snaps. So here's a case where I'm not at the origin. 
So if I'm not at the origin, I use the at for the size. So I'm going to make this 20 feet long in the X, so at 20 feet. But then I'm only going to make it 6 inches in the Y, or 6 inches wide. So comma 6 inches. Okay, and for the height, I'm going to make this 10 feet. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I will copy it. So I need some snaps on because I want to copy it from the end point of that wall. So I'm going to make sure that my snaps are on and set to end point. OK. All right, and now we need, uh, we need a roof object. So I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to copy it. Let's, let's go to shaded mode for a second. OK, so I'm going to copy this. Now, I can copy this vertical. That's really what I need if I'm working in 3D. So I want vertical equal yes, point to copy from. I'm going to copy it from the bottom of this floor so it aligns with the top of that wall. So vertical keeps it constrained. OK, and just good layer organization. I'm going to make a layer called roof. And I'm going to select that, right click, and place that on the roof layer. OK. All right, so now we're good. We have some geometry. Now we can start setting up cameras. OK, so it's very helpful when you're setting up cameras to actually be in the view. So I'm in the viewport versus when you're, you'll see why it can be confusing if you're in uh, four viewports here. So let's, let's go ahead and look at making a camera. OK, so I'm going to start with my perspective view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this camera on. There's already a camera for the perspective view. We just don't see it. So how do I turn it on? This is where you use the F6 key to turn the camera on. And I, I might, I'm running a Mac with Windows, so it's actually function F6. So um, you might want to take a look at that on your keyboard. Also, if I type in the command camera, I can show and hide that camera. So I'm going to show. And it's a little confusing because you don't see anything at the moment. But if you go to your other four viewports, there, you're, now you're going to see the camera for the perspective view. So a couple things to note about this. All right, there is a camera point, which we see there. Okay. I'm moving that around. There's a point that moves both the camera and the target. Now, it's, uh, it's really important to take your snaps off, your object snaps. I would take them all off when you're moving the camera around. So I'm going to take off object snap and grid snap because that can get in the way. So, and I also have gumball on. OK, so we have our camera point. We ha and that moves just the camera. So you see that moving around in the perspective view. Then I have a point that selects, make sure I get that point. I have a point that selects both the camera and the target. And then I have the target. Now, let's take a look at this. So in the, in the front view, let's go ahead and turn my, my grid off. So function F7 will turn the grid on and off. OK. So. Here is my target, OK? So I'm selecting my target. Now, the target is, is helpful to you know, position the building. Let's say I want to position it in the middle of the frame. So you see that I'm doing that with the perspective in the perspective view. Or if I want to raise or lower the building in the, in the perspective view. So the target is really helpful for that. A lot of people like to use panning and orbiting, and I think it's very important to learn how to use the cameras, especially for interior renderings. So you want to become a professional with the camera. OK, now this point that's at the top here, a lot of times that gets selected. And what will happen 
is if I go ahead and, and I move that point, it rotates the camera, and then it's it feels like it feels like game over. <laughs> so what do you do at this point? So it's not it's not undo. Undo will not do anything. It's view undo, and what's important is the the view that you want to undo is current. So that has to be current, and then you can go to view undo and it resets that camera. Okay, all right, so let's jump into this. So we're gonna make three cameras. We're gonna make uh, an aerial, an eye level, and an interior view. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this camera. This is gonna be our aerial view. Now, lens length. Lens length is how wide of an angle your camera has, and the wider, the more dramatic. There comes a point where the camera is too wide and it becomes distorted. So the way you set the lens length is you have to make the viewport current. And then you go over to properties and you'll find lens length. So the default is 50. It's not, not very wide of an angle. So I usually work between 25 is the lowest I'll go, but you know around between 25 and 30. So let's set this for the aerial view. We'll set this to 30. So now it pushes my, it doesn't move my camera away, but it pushes the building away in this case. So it's a wider camera angle. So this allows me to move closer to the building and get more dramatic lines as they converge to the vanishing point. So it's a much more dramatic camera angle with that lens length being wide, being at 30. Okay, so that's, I like that camera. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to save this camera. So this is where we look at what's called named view. So I'm going to type in the command named view. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the little floppy disk there to save it. And I'm going to call this camera one. Okay. And I don't think this is default. I have this auto update thumbnails checked on so that when the when I move this camera and I save it, it will automatically update this thumbnail. So I like to keep that on. Okay, so we have that saved and you know, not a not a bad idea to you know, test it out. So if I if I was to orbit, now I like I would like to lock this view and I heard Rhino 7 you're going to be able to lock the view. So that's going to be I think helpful for all of us. Okay, so now you see that view has moved around, but I have it saved in the name view. So if I double click, there we go, boom, the view is back. All right, great. So that's our first camera. So let's make a couple more cameras. Okay. All right, so now I want to make my eye level camera. So what I can do is if I go to named view, There's a nice feature here where I can click on duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate. I'm going to click on it and right click and choose rename named view. And I'm going to call this camera two. Now I would say it'd be, it'd be really helpful to name these actually what they are. So this first one, I'm going to rename that. I'm going to call it aerial. It's my aerial camera view. And this one is going to end up being my eye level. Okay, so we haven't made it eye level. Let's take a look at making it eye level. All right, so I want to set this to my eye level view now. So I'm going to double click on that. Oh, I was in the top view actually. So I'll set this back. This is good for you guys to see. Set this back to top. Okay, so now I want to change this one to the eye level. Okay. All right, so that camera is still being displayed in these viewports. Remember that was F6 where we typed in the can, uh, command camera and show. So for this one, we're gonna take this, I'm gonna lower it down. Okay, so, what's, so what is eye level? Okay, so f eye level for me, I like a lower eye level, like around four foot six, so just below 60 inches. So what I need to do to set the Z height, this is really important, to set the Z height of the camera and the target, again, this view has to be current. Okay, when I do that, now I'm seeing 
over here I'm seeing the camera Z height and the target Z height okay now these are displayed in inches so uh, they're not in feet so it's a little you know got to do a little translation there okay so for the Z I'm gonna make this I'm gonna make it 54 inches so you see now the camera drops to eye level but with the target still raised up I'm getting distortion in that view so I need my camera in this case if it's eye level I'm gonna set my camera and my target I'm gonna set those both to four foot six okay so now I have a nice eye level view Now I have to remember to save this eye level view let's also take a look at the lens length okay so if this lens length was 50 it's pushing me closer it's not as wide of a camera angle so I want to set that back to 30 I'm getting a, getting a nice wide camera angle okay let me let me make sure that I save this so oops gotta be careful where you're typing all right so let's go ahead and type in named view and let's go ahead and save this we'll overwrite it okay all right so you see the auto update thumbnail actually updated because we had that checked on okay so how's this working aerial eye level okay let's make one more because I think interior cameras are the most challenging and this is a pretty small space that we made so um, it's even more challenging to make a camera in that small space all right so we can do the same thing we just did we could we could duplicate it so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it I'm gonna right click and rename it I'm gonna call this one interior okay make that one current it says interior there all right so we're gonna move we're going to move the camera and the target around. So I'm going to select my camera point. Uh, go ahead and get inside this space. And I'm going to select, that's my camera point. Now I'm going to select my target. Okay, so now I'm clicking to where there's multiple objects. So which one do I want? Which camera point do I want? Well, I want to make sure that I don't, I don't get the top one. I want the one in the middle. That's my target. Okay, and I'm using this little gumball where I can I can move this I can move this around. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Let's get the right camera here. Alright, I like to get I like to get both walls that's what I'm trying to do both side walls so I'm looking straight out of this thing so I might need I'm just barely getting those in my view so I need to change my lens length so I need to make sure that interior view is current I'm going to go over to my lens length now, I don't have much room I'll try a 28 okay good I'm getting getting both sides there and I can see that displayed in the top view all right so before we jump over to moving the sun around and doing snapshots just want to type in named view. Oh, gotta be careful where I'm typing it. Type in named view and make sure that I save this one. Okay. All right, so there's all three of our thumbnails aerial, eye level, and interior. All right, I also want to make sure I save this file. All right, save often. Control S, Command S, save often. Okay, so we've got our cameras. Now we want to work with the sun. So let's go. Let's go ahead and change this. Now I can I can open up named view. Uh, another way that I can get to views is I can go down, click on this down arrow, and I can go to set view, and I can change this. I can change this to aerial if I want to start with the aerial. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to make a ground. Okay, just for just looking at you know if we're looking at shadows we need something to cast shadows on I can also with this aerial view I can turn off the camera by typing in the command camera and just typing in hide or using the f6 okay all right so I'm gonna make a, a big ground plane here so I'm just gonna type in box just make a big my snap is off right now let me make ground current layer okay so I'm going to type in box 
and do this in negative six inches. Okay, so because the top of my floor is at six inches, or I'm sorry, because the top of my floor is at zero, this is also interfering. Basically, the ground plane and the floor are in the same place. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move that down. Turn my snaps back on for a second. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So we need to see, now we're looking at setting the sun. So we need to see the sun in the, in the view, in this aerial view. So I'm going to go ahead and change the view display. Okay, so right now it's shaded. I'm going to change that to rendered. Okay, so now that's rendered. Let's look at, let's go over to sun. Okay, so the sun is not on by default. Also, this window, when you type in, if I close that and I type in the command sun, it, you know, it's a pop-up window. I think this one is helpful to, to actually dock. We didn't dock the named views, but I, I like, I like docking the sun. Okay, so we're going to turn this on, get some shadows. We're also going to turn this to manual control. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this in our view. Turn that grid off so we get an idea. Okay, so if I'm looking in the top view, north is up. The direction north is up. So it's just, it's matching this compass. So I like to have, you know, north up so that it matches the compass. So now if I start to move this compass around i'm seeing that in the view okay all right now something else that i like to do when i'm lighting when i'm putting in my main lighting especially for an exterior view is i like to i like the sun to hit one side of the building more extreme than the other okay so i don't like i don't like when you know both sides of a building are lit evenly i like I like it to be dramatic. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Now, to lower it down a little bit. Okay. Get some shadow off to the side there. I really want this face to be lit, so I'm struggling a little bit with where I want the, sh that's always the challenge, like where I want the shadow and where I want the the strong light hitting. Okay, that's that's pretty good right there because I'm getting a strong light on the front edge of the building. Now there's not a whole lot of building here, but I'm getting strong light and I'm getting a softer light on the right side of that. Okay, so and that sun is coming basically directly from the west. So here's the here's the west and then I could raise and lower that sun. All right, so now I want to save this snapshot of this aerial view. Okay, so I'm making that view current. Again, that's important. Aerial view, view is current. I'm typing in the command snapshots. Okay, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to click on Save As. I like to match the cameras. I, naming it is what I mean. I like to name it the same as my camera. So I'm going to call this Aerial. Okay, so I don't think these are all open by default. So yours probably looks like this the first time that you type it in. Okay, since I've done this recently, that's what it looks like. So you see with snapshots, there's so many things that you can save here. Layer states, lights, mesh modifiers, okay, clipping planes. So this is, I think snapshots, when I saw this, kind of blew my mind. I think it's really powerful. For today, we're just looking at saving the view so saving the camera and all you see there's display mode is there so much stuff there so under rendering i'm going to save the sun in this case i'm just looking at the sun position okay so those two things i'm going to save in the snapshot okay so there you see that snapshot saved now let's let's do this for our other camera view. So let's do this for, let's go down the set view and we're going to change this to the eye level view. Okay. 
there's our eye level view and I'm gonna go ahead and move the position of that Sun so let's say I want in this case I want some strong shadows of the cantilever so I'm getting that and I'm also getting some stronger light on the front edge of that so that Sun is actually from here it's shining from this point hitting the, the the building there so this matches perfectly matches the viewport so you can imagine the building being centered right there in the middle and then this is also the height of the Sun okay so that's a good Sun position for me for now it's a start I'm gonna go ahead and save that snapshot I'm gonna call this eye level Okay, so just making sure in this case I'm saving what I want, which is just the sun and the camera. All right, so let's test this out. So let's watch the sun position and watch what happens in the viewport. So if I go back to aerial, my sun position is changing. If I go to eye level, my sun position is changing. Okay, one more. We have that we have that interior view we got to look at. So let's change the view. Let's go down the set view. Let's go to interior. Okay, all right, sun position isn't too bad. So let's look at getting that sun position to come in. All right, so let's see now. Seeing the camera in this case, I think is, is really important. So, because um, I need to know where the camera is, <laughs> so then I can gauge where the sun is coming in. So with the interior view current, I'm gonna e either use my F6 or I'm gonna type in camera and I'm going to choose show okay so there's my camera so yeah in this case my daylight let's say I want it to come in and then wash on one of the walls so I'm going to have it come in there and now it's washing on that wall let's bring it raise it up so it doesn't come in too far into the room okay so I'm going to go with that for my for my son all right, so let's save the snapshot. Make sure interior view is current. Click on Save As. This is going to be our interior. Okay, making sure that sun and camera is checked on. All right, let's try this out. So eye level, watching the sun move, aerial, and interior. All right, the eye level and the interior are pretty close, but different. So those are saved for us. All right, let's take a look at, see if I missed anything here. All right, cameras, lens length, view undo, name view, Z height, snapshots. We got it all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Let me know your thoughts. And I will see you during the next video.